Hey everyone, so it's Hearth and welcome back to my channel. On today's video I'm sharing with you the spells and rituals that I'm doing for this Mab on season and hopefully it will inspire you for your own magical practice. <music> Mabon is the second of the harvest festivals within the Wheel of the Year, and it's considered the thanksgiving for everything we've achieved in the previous year. For some people, the next celebration of Samhain is the New Year, and so everything that you started at Samhain should ideally be coming to fruition around this time of year. It's a harvest in many ways. Not only is it a time for fruits and vegetables to be harvested in abundance, it's also a time where we are reaping the fruits of our labor, all the hard work that we have put into our mundane and our magical lives. So now is not only a good time to give thanks, but also to set ourselves up for a positive dark half of the year. Mabon is one of those celebrations that often gets put to the wayside, probably because it falls just before Samhain, one of the most famous of all of the festivities. And so I'm hoping that today's video will give you some inspiration for your own practice. I've got a collection of different spells and rituals that I'm doing for this Sabbath season. Some of them involve candle magic, some of them involve a bit of water magic and tie into previous Sabbath celebrations. I'm really hoping that there's going to be something in here that you can carry out or that it will at least inspire you in your own magical practice. To start off with, I wanted to give thanks to my deities, spirits, ancestors, guides, and guardians that have assisted me in my spells, rituals, and also my mundane life in the previous year. I really enjoy, especially at this time of year, taking a little bit of time to honour them specifically. Not just to say thank you at the end of a spell or ritual, but to give them a dedicated working specifically for them as a way of sharing our thanks in a slightly different, more energetic way. This working is focused around a candle. Now I'm using one of my own beeswax Gaia candles, these we create for my shop, but you can use any candle that you have access to. It could be a tea light candle, a large glass candle, or a freestanding candle. The main thing here is that it is going to be safely secured within a candle holder. You can choose a candle that relates to the things that they've helped you with in the previous year. So if they've helped you with improving your relationship, then red or pink might be a good option. If they've aided you primarily with protection, then a black candle could be a good option. For me, I'm using natural beeswax, not only because they help me with all of my workings, but also because it is that golden color of prosperity and abundance, which is what a lot of my workings focus around. I'm then using a candle holder. I'm using copper, but you can use any kind of holder that's suitable for your candle. And then I'm also using an apple oil as well as some apple blossom as my representation for this working. Mabon is the festival of apples. The apple harvest is happening all across the country and it is a really symbolic aspect of the Mabon celebrations. Not only that, but apple to me is associated with abundance, prosperity, fruitfulness and growth and development. And so for me, apple is a perfect representation for everything that my ancestors, guides, guardians, angels have helped me with over the past year. So I'm gonna start by charging the candle, placing it in the candle holder and then dressing that candle with some of the oil. I don't too much, just enough to lightly cover the exterior of the candle. Around the candle I'm then placing a collection of charged apple blossom and then I'm giving thanks, saying a few words and then lighting that candle. Now the words that I'm using in this particular ritual I have taken from an online source, I will leave it linked down in the description box below. I did however edit the wording slightly, repeating it three times with three different variations to really focus on my point of giving thanks for prosperity and abundance and not just for requesting it. And this is something I really enjoy doing, is taking a resource that I find online or in a book, and then I will alter it for my purposes. You can do this not only with spells that contain objects, but also with the words that are within a spell. So the original content went as follows. Autumn is upon us. Mabon blessings be brought to us. Through the harvest season, health and prosperity, from now through Samhain. And I changed that up each time I said it for the duration of three, I charged the candle again, and then I allowed it to burn down. Now, if you are gonna be using a different candle for this, you might wanna do it slightly differently. So if you were using a tea light candle, you would want to dress the top of the candle with that oil and then sprinkle the apple or whatever herb and oil you're using around the edge of it. 
and if you are using a tall glass candle you might want to just dress the top of that candle with oil and then as before sprinkle some of the herb of your choice around the bottom. If you're using a tall freestanding candle you can also carve your thanks into the exterior of the candle if that's something that you would be interested in doing before dressing the candle with oil and then sprinkling the herbs around the edge. You really can mix and match this to use whatever you feel drawn to use. I have however used the apple because it is so closely associated with the Mabon season. The next thing that I'm doing for Mabon is changing up my altar space. This is something I have not done since Letha. I completely missed Lamas, I just did not have the time to do it and I felt that my space was really lacking it. So this time we're setting it up properly for Mabon and I've ended up with an altar space that is slightly different than I would normally have. A good chunk of the altar was laid out for a specific ritual that I will be doing that is going to carry on through the rest of the Mabon season. So you will see the first part of that ritual in this video, but I'm going to be continuing it on after this point. So to start off with, I swept that altar space with my small little besom. I got this from a cute little shop a few months ago and I absolutely love it. It makes cleaning off and cleansing my altar space so much easier. I then start adding up all of my pictures, all of my statues and my flowers. And then slowly but surely, I've ended up building this symmetrical altar. And usually I don't do things that are as symmetrical as this, but as this really is the turning point between summer and autumn, it is the autumn equinox, I really felt that I wanted to have some kind of polarity on that altar space, have a clear divide between the summer that is gone and the autumn that is beginning. And so I really like how this turned out, especially with the fact that the central area I can now use for spells and rituals as well as readings. And that is what I'm gonna be using it for for the rest of this video. One thing I really enjoy doing for the Sabbaths is a divination reading, especially when I'm using my tarot cards. I have created a spread specifically for this Sabbath, but you don't have to use it solely for tarot cards. You can use it for Oracle, Lenormand, playing cards, as well as runes, Oem, and really anything else that has a series of symbols that you can draw from a bag, you can utilize this spread for. This one is created in the shape of a bowl, the idea being that that abundance is growing as the season is going forwards, and so the reading is going to be surrounding the growth or the lack thereof of a particular topic. So it could just be a general reading where you're looking at the development and the personal growth within your life, or it could be about something specific like love or work or money or friendships. Whatever it is you're doing a reading for, it's about that potential growth and development and how that's going to pan out in any particular hazards or difficulties that you might face. So you start at the far left of this reading, working your way into the bottom of the bowl and then out the other side. And it's going to work in a chronological order. So while all of those cards will work together, the first card is how things are going to begin this season and the last card is how things are going to end. And it's all about that progress in abundance and change for the better, hopefully. Though do bear in mind that with all tarot spreads, you're not guaranteed to get a positive answer. It entirely depends on the outcome for that particular question. Now when I undertake these kind of readings, I will work them specifically from this Sabbath to the next. So my readings at this time of the year will be from Mabon all the way up to the Samhain season. That way I can get a good forward picture of the things that might happen, but I'm not going so far that I'm going to confuse the reading and that things might drastically change. 
This season, I also decided that I wanted to branch out from candle magic and try something a little bit different. If you've been here for a while and you've seen some of my other Sabbath videos, you will have seen that for my Letha video, I created sun water. Now I've really enjoyed using waters in the past, but it's not something I've really done recently. And I still had my sun water left over from that video and I really wanted to do something with it. Initially, I wanted to create some kind of spray or cleansing agent that was utilizing that solar energy. But in the end, I decided against this. Mabon is that time of year where we're seeing the summer fade away and autumn take over. The sun is starting to wane in strength, and so I really wanted to have this be a last hurrah for some of that solar energy before the nights start getting too dark. And so I decanted my solar water into a small bowl and container, and I also took three basil leaves from my basil plant. Solar water is all about positive, abundant, fruitful energy the perfect thing for a Mabon harvest celebration, and basil is a plant that is deeply rooted in prosperity and abundance workings, and so I really wanted to use these two in combination to really bring forward that abundance and prosperity as we get into the darker part of the year, to bring in some of that powerful solar energy from the summer into this darker, colder time of year. And so I went to my front door, back door, and then around my property, using the basil leaves to sprinkle that sun water over doorsteps, boundaries, entryways, around the edge of a property, as well as front doors, back doors, and door handles. And that way you're really adding in that abundant energy into a particular space. Now you don't have to just do this for your home, you can do this for a business as well. You can also use it to wipe down window sills, door frames, window frames, all of these kind of things if you aren't able to access any outside space. And you also don't have to use sun water that you created at Letha. There are so many different types of water that you can utilize and create, but as long as you can have a nice, warm, bright, sunny day, you can still create solar water that you can use for this purpose. Ideally, you would want to leave it out in ambient sunlight for a few consecutive days, up to a week to really supercharge it, and then decant it for this kind of purpose. Please always make sure though that you aren't gonna be causing a hazard by placing it in direct sunlight, as especially glass bottles like mine have a tendency to magnify that sun and essentially you can create a magnifying glass that will burn anything that it hits. And so just make sure that you're always being safe. When I was done sprinkling it around my property, I left a small bit at the bottom to sprinkle as an offering to the land whites, nature spirits, and spirits that reside within the area. And that is a working that I'm really looking forward to doing again. I thoroughly enjoyed carrying it out. It's very different for me. Usually I stick to fire magic, but a change is as good as a rest. And so I was really happy to try something new. And it could be a good time if you wanna try something new in your magical practice as well. An alternative to this would be to utilize some moon water, especially if you created some for the blue moon that's just gone. It could be a good time to utilize that moon water that's left over that you can no longer drink for the purpose of protecting and enchanting your home. It's a great time to do this. You don't have to use basil leaves for this purpose. There's lots of different plants out there that you can utilize or you can simply use your fingers. That's an option as well. Just to sprinkle it around the edge of your property, wiping down windowsills and door frames, just to really imbue that space with magical energy. So you can completely adapt this as all of my workings to suit what it is that you have and what you need. The last working that I'm doing for this Mab on season is what you saw on my altar setup. We're doing a ritual for attracting abundance and removing negativity. This dualistic ritual is perfect to carry out at this changing of seasons. We are seeing this duality in real life right now, as we're essentially passing the baton from summer to autumn. For this ritual, I'm using a fire safe container. I'm choosing to use one of my cauldrons, but you can use whatever it is that is safe for you to use for this purpose. It also needs to contain a little bit of water, so make sure that you're choosing something appropriate. I'm also choosing two candle holders and two candles. One is going to be white to represent the summer and the lighter part of the year. The other will be black to represent the darker, colder half of the year. And these in turn will be used for positive intention and cleansing away negativity. I'm also using two oils. I'm using a Bridget oil for the white candle. Bridget is my matron goddess. And so I will connect with her when I want to attract in positive intentions. You can use whatever kind of oil best suits what you want to manifest. And then for the cleansing candle, I'm using a cleansing oil. 
You can, as before, choose whatever oil you feel most appropriate. You might want to use a protection oil if you want to bring more protection into your life. But because the black candle for me is being used to cleanse things away, I'm gonna be using a cleansing oil. I'm also using a piece of paper, a pen to write any of my information and petitions, and some spring water to be able to cleanse it all away. I'm choosing water that I gathered from the Chalice Well Gardens this past July, but you can utilize whatever it is you have access to. This could be tap water, spring water, sacred water, moon water, if that's what you want to use, to just add a little bit of extra energy and to wash those intentions into the earth, to cleanse away negativity and bring health and growth to all of those positive intentions. The first step for me was cleansing the candles. Both of these candles have been in storage for a long time and so I really wanted to get rid of any of that excess energetic gunk that can develop over time. I didn't want to smoke cleanse them and while you could dress them with some of that spring water to cleanse them and then allow them to dry, I wanted to get this working started quickly so I decided to do an energetic energy cleanse. To do this, you essentially push your energy into those candles, allow it to stick to all the pre-existing energy that's there, and then you pull it back out again and you kind of swat it away. You kind of just do this, at least that's what I do. I just kind of sprinkle it away from where I'm going, and that way I can be sure that those candles are clear of energy. I wouldn't necessarily use this technique for anything more intensive than just some candles that have been sitting around for too long, but it is a good alternative for this kind of quick acting cleansing. Once the candles are cleansed, I'm then dressing each of them in turn with the appropriate oil. Now, how you choose to do this will very much depend on your tradition. Different people will dress candles in different ways. For me, for attraction, I will anoint that candle with oil from the top down to draw it towards me. And for the cleansing candle, I will anoint it from the base upwards to remove it from that space. Everyone is gonna have a slightly different technique, so play around with it and see what works best for you. Once that's done, I go and wash my hands to get rid of some of that oil, and then I write my petitions. Now I'm writing these in small slips. So a singular line is for a singular goal. I tend to stick to a maximum of five or six goals on each side. So I will have five things I want to manifest and five or so things that I want to cleanse away. Though for this working, I didn't end up with that many things I wanted to remove. And then I cut each of them out with a pair of scissors in small strips so that they can easily be burned. I then lit both of the candles and I began burning each of those pieces of paper in turn in their corresponding candle. So if I wanted to manifest something, I would burn them in the white candle. If I wanted to cleanse something away, I would burn it in the black candle, and any remains of the petitions were then placed inside the cauldron. Now do be careful when you do this. I'm very well versed in practicing this, so I do use my fingers, but if in doubt, feel free to use charcoal tongs. Even a pair of tweezers is better than burning yourself, so do make sure you're staying safe. When all of the petition slips were burned and placed inside the cauldron, I did place a match inside that was lit just to burn away any of the last over remaining parts before I moved on to adding in the water. Now the water for me is a twofold agent. Not only can it cleanse away the negative, it can also water and nourish all of those positive intentions. And so I'm using this spring water as a way of getting both of those intentions in one to do a two in one style working. I'm only adding in enough water just to cover the ashes that are left behind and then I'm swirling it around while focusing on my intention. Now for this working, I did utilize some words that I found online. Specifically, they're from a book by Lobby Cabot. If I can, I'll try to link it in the description box. The words that I used while I was swirling around this cauldron go as follows. O oh, great mother, speak your farewell. Anew, anew, as the wheel spins around, is marked by the sound, anew, anew, adieu, adieu. From the wells come the healing powers of Mabon. And for me, that last bit was what really sold me on this working. And so that is what I really wanted to focus on when carrying this out. So I swirled it around, I spoke the words three times, and then I took the cauldron and the spring water outside with me to return it to the earth. You can use this in a planting bed, a plant pot, you can use this straight into your back garden. I have a small section of the garden under a plum tree that I really enjoy doing this, so that's what I did. I took the cauldron, swirled it around, tipped the remains at the bottom 
bottom of the plum tray and then I put more spring water inside that cauldron to make sure I got all of those ashes, tipped that out and then I watered the ground again, giving thanks to the energies and spirits of place that would help me with my working and then I went back inside. These two candles I will then burn down for the duration of Mabon and I will probably be using some Mabon incense or some abundance incense inside my cauldron as the season goes on to really additionally add that energy into my working. I'll do this till the candles are completely burned down and then if you wanted to, if the Mabon season isn't over yet, you can then replace those candles with two more and continue on that working. This is one that you can very highly adapt. For me, I chose a white and a black candle to represent the light, bright, sunny half of the year and the half of the year that is more spent in the darkness and nighttime. White for me is also a multi-purpose candle that I can use for all kinds of different intentions. Black for me is a powerful protective and cleansing agent, and so I'll use them for these purposes. If you wanted your working to be different, however, you can choose whatever candles and oils you feel most appropriate for that working. You can use a pink candle and a green candle. If you want to attract friendship and love and also good fortune, you can use a gold and a silver candle if your intentions are more aligned with the sun and the moon. You really can play around with this. The idea is that we are manifesting two different things that we can connect with that water element. And so for me, the idea of growth and development of things and also cleansing and washing away can go really well together as long as we let the candles and the energies know that that's what we're doing. That water, when we tip it away with those ashes, is going to wash away the things that we don't need and it will allow us to nourish all of these positive things in our life with the energy that we are taking away from those things that we want to get rid of. And so for me, despite it seeming almost counterintuitive to do these two polar opposite workings, I find that the destruction of negative things in your life can actually fuel all of those positive and useful things. So those are all of the things I'm planning for this Mabon season. I would love to know if there's anything in this list that you're going to do yourself or if you have any spells or rituals planned that you would be willing to share a bit of information about, feel free to put it down in the comments section so we can really get a well-rounded magical Mabon practice. I hope that you did enjoy this video. If you did, please give it a like. It means a lot to me. If you do have any questions or comments, feel free to post them in the comment section. And if you do enjoy the magical content on this channel or in this video, feel free to hit subscribe. I try to post magical content every single week. I do also have a full video on Mabon, what it is, and many different ways to celebrate it. If you would like to see that, I will link it in the description box and I'll try to also put it up here where possible. So with that being said, I hope you're all staying safe. I hope you have a marvelous, magical day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.